Hey guys, welcome to the session by Intellipart. In this session, we'll be learning how to set up Puppet Master Slave on top of AWS architecture. And before moving on with the session, please subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our upcoming videos. Now let us begin with this session. So guys, here is my AWS management console. The first thing that I'll do is I'll have to launch an instance, right? So I'll select the Ubuntu uh, AMI, Ubuntu 18.04. I'll select this. I'll select the t2.micro, which falls under the free tier. I'll click on next. I'll select the number of instances as two because I want to create one node puppet master server setup. So I'll do, uh, I'll mention the number of instances as two. I'll click on next add storage and then I'll come to security group, right? So in the security group, what you have to do is you will have to have a security group, which basically will allow TCP connection, all TCP connections from the IP address of your slave, right? Either you can do this or what you can do is you can allow a TCP connection on the port 8140 from your uh, this particular IP address which is of the slave if you want to be more specific right but for now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open all TCP ports and I'll say it can come from anywhere and I'll click on review and launch the moment you click on launch uh, you will be asked to specify the uh, private key that you want to use so I have one private key already there on my system so I've specified that now basically your instances are getting launched so let's label these instances as master and the next one would become slave. Okay, so we've specified this. And now while they are launching, let's have a look at all the commands that we're gonna use to basically install my puppet master and slave. So guys, these are all the commands. So this these commands will basically run on my master and then these commands will run on my puppet agent. Right. And in the end, we are also going to verify if our master and agent uh, connection is successful by basically creating a file from the master on the agent with this particular content. So don't worry about it. We'll come to this part and I'll explain you what this file basically means when we get to this part of uh, having the file ready on our system. Okay, so for now, let's start with the master. Let's start installing master. So let's see if our instances are ready. So yes, they are in the running state. So let's connect to our master first. So this is the master IP address. I'll connect through putty, specify the private key. Now, this will basically let me enter my master server. So let me just change the font setting so it becomes more clear for you. And let me choose a color for the master as well so that we don't get confused between the master and the slave. So this is my master server. All right. So while I connect to my slave, let me just update this machine. So while this machine is getting updated, what I can do is I can connect to my slave. So this is my slave guys. Let's connect to it using putty. So this is my IP address let's specify the private key as well and now we are connected to our slave as well awesome let's change the font setting for this let's make it a little bigger so that you guys can also see this all right so now we are on our slave machine let's update this machine as well all right so meanwhile our master is now updated now let's go back to our notepad so to see what we have to do next so we have to install wget first so wget is pre-installed on aws we don't have to do this next step is basically to download this particular file let's do that using wget on the master so the file is downloaded and now let's unzip the file using this command so the file is unzipped now let's install puppet master here so we are installing puppet master puppet master is now being installed once it's successfully installed we can check uh, the installation status by going to the policy so puppet master is nearly installed now and now let's check the content of the policy so yes uh, puppet master has been successfully installed and now what i can do is i can check the status of the puppet master service so this is the service status so it is active and running so that's awesome so that's what we wanted so our puppet master is now installed on our 
system. Next thing is to basically fine tune some settings. So let's do that. So we'll edit this file, which basically are the defaults for uh, our Puppet Master for, for running. All right, here we are. So basically your Puppet Master by default would use one GB of memory. But since our system is also one GB, what we are gonna do, we are gonna mention that the Puppet Master can only use 512 MB of the memory. So Puppet Master can uh, work uh, in a 512 MB uh, memory as well if you are dealing with less number of nodes. So since this particular setup is for our demo purpose, so we can mention 512 MB for our Puppet Master, which should be enough. So we'll save the file and now the defaults are ready. And now for applying the defaults, we'll just restart the Puppet Master over here. So Puppet Master is now restarted. And now we'll open port 8140 through which basically Puppet uh, communicates with the slave. Uh, through the firewall of the OS as well. So that's done and we're set. So Puppet Master is successfully uh, set now. Let's go to our slave and start setting up our slave as well. So on a slave, we have updated the machine. WCAD is pre-installed. We'll first download this particular file. So the file is downloaded. Let's unzip the file. The file has been unzipped. Now let's install Puppet. So earlier we installed Puppet Master. Over here, we're installing Puppet, which is nothing but Puppet Agent, right? So what once Puppet Agent is installed, I have to manually start it, and we can do that using this command. But before writing this command, what we have to do is we have to go to each machine and change the host file, right? So in the host file, I have to mention the IP address of the master. So we'll have to do this for both the machines. So let's specify the IP address like this. And let's specify the master's IP address in the master as well. And in the slave as well too. So we'll do a sudo nano slash etc slash host. Specify the IP address. Write puppet in front of it and save the file. All right. So now we are ready to start the puppet agent. So let's do that. So Puppet Agent has now been started. Let's enable Puppet as well, which basically means on restart also, Puppet will be started automatically. So this is done as well. All right. So now uh, some steps happened in the background, which we were not able to uh, see. What were those steps? So that was basically what we discussed in yesterday's class. So the moment Puppet Slave starts, it basically just sends a request for the master certificate. How does the puppet slave know where the master is? We just specify the IP address in the host file, right? So it knows where the puppet master is. So it sends the request to the master. The master in turn sends the master certificate. And at the same time, it also requests for the slave certificate. So this, when, when the master requests for the slave certificate, uh, the puppet slave basically sends the slave certificate. And now we have to go to puppet master basically. So we are here, we'll say sudo puppet sort list, right? So this should basically list any uh, certificates which have been sent to the master. So let's check if we have any. So as you can see, we have a request for from the uh, puppet slave on the master. So how do we know it's the puppet slave? Uh, you see this IP address 172.31.44.167. And if we compare it with our slave, it's 172.31.44.167, right? So that's the slave's certificate which has been sent to the master. So we'll have to sign it now. So for that, the command is sign. And if you, there are more than one certificates or more than two or three certificates and you want to sign them all, all you have to do is sudo puppet sign and then hyphen hyphen all. Specify this and your certificate is now signed, right? So my puppet master and puppet slave can now interact with each other. So our next step is to verify this. So what we are going to do is we're going to come back over here and now basically we are going to create a manifest. Now, what is a manifest? A manifest basically specifies what all changes have to be made on the agent or on the slave. And these are the changes that we are going to do. So basically we are creating a file which exists in this particular directory, 
right? So the Puppet Master has to ensure that this file is present on this directory and the permissions, the read write permissions of this file is this, which is the user should be able to read write and the other users of the OS should be able to read this particular file. Okay, and what should be the content of this file? The content should basically be it works on and then the IP address of the slave. All right, so this IP address is going to change with every machine on which this file is going to exist. So this is going to be the content. So let's create this particular file. So for that, first I'll have to create a path on the master. So this is my master. Let's create a path. Path is created. Now let's edit the uh, manifest file on the master. So this is the manifest file and the content of the file should be this. Let's copy it, paste it over here, save the file. And once the file has been saved, all you have to do is restart Puppet Master. So I'll restart Puppet Master like this. So my Puppet Master has now been restarted. And all I have to do is go to the Puppet. And since Puppet is a pool configuration tool, the slave has to request for the changes. So I'll say Puppet sudo Puppet agent hyphen hyphen test right so before i run this command i want to show you guys uh, that basically there is no file inside temp which starts with i so i'll go inside temp and if i do an ls over here you can see there's no file called it works so now what we're going to do i'm going to say sudo puppet agent hyphen hyphen test so this command will basically see ask the master for the, uh, is, is there any changes required for this particular server? The master will send the changes to the uh, agent. The agent will make those changes and send the report back to the master. So I'll hit enter now. And now you can see that there has been some things which have been done. And you can see a file has been created in slash temp. Let's verify this. So let's do an ls now. So I can see a file has been created, it works. And if I do a cat on this file, I can see the contents of this file is it works on and then the IP address of the slave, which is this, right? So congratulations guys, your puppet master slave setup is now complete, right? So now you can use the puppet master slave to basically uh, do configuration management. So you just have to specify the configuration on the master and then it will be applied on the slave. Okay guys, we've come to the end of this session. I hope this session was informative and helpful. If you have any queries regarding this session, please feel free to comment it below and we'll love to help you out. Thank you.